You're listening to an Airwave Media Podcast. Useless information. Hi, I'm Steve Silverman, and you're listening to a classic episode of the Useless Information Podcast. The Gimli Glider story you're about to hear was first released on January 29th of 2008, although metadata lists it as February 1st. Either way, I was only days into my podcasting career, never imagining I'd still be doing it all these years later. I originally penned the story for my useless information website in the late 1990s, and then included it in my second book, which is titled Lindbergh's Artificial Heart. The Gimli Glider story is one that I told to my science students every single year that I taught, and it serves as a cautionary tale as to why one has to be extremely cautious with calculations. And that's because a simple mistake could put many lives in danger. And just what was that mistake? Well, you're going to have to listen to find out. Now, this was recorded with rather rudimentary audio equipment, so the sound quality isn't that great. But I do hope that you'll enjoy the story. Let's roll the tape. Welcome to the Useless Information Podcast, my collection of fascinating true stories from the flip side of history. My name is Steve Silverman, and today's story is on the Gimli Glider. It's what happens when a giant 767 passenger plane runs out of gas halfway to its destination. Now, before we get to that story, let's talk about today's question of the day. My question today brings together the world of quantum physics and the world of popular music. In 1954, physicist Max Born won the Nobel Prize, which some would argue is long overdue, for his pioneering work in quantum mechanics. Now, which celebrity was he the grandfather of? Was it one, Elton John, two, Paul McCartney, three, Elvis Presley, four, Mick Jagger, five, Olivia Newton-John, or six, Keith Richards? Again, physicist Max Born won the Nobel Prize in 1954 for his pioneering work in quantum mechanics. Who was he the grandfather of? Was it one, Elton John, two, Paul McCartney, three, Elvis Presley, four, Mick Jagger, five, Olivia Newton-John, or six, Keith Richards? I'll tell you the answer at the end of this podcast. And now for today's story. The story of the Gimli Glider goes back to July 23, 1983, and it's a story of Air Canada Flight 143. Air Canada Flight 143 was a Boeing 767, which at the time was the newest plane in the Air Canada fleet. It was a state-of-the-art airplane. Uh, The cockpit was all lit up with all kinds of computerized controls and looked like your home video game. And the flight was scheduled to go from Montreal on to Ottawa and then on to Edmonton. It was piloted by Captain Robert Pearson, who was a 26-year veteran with Air Canada, and the first officer was a guy named Maurice Quintel. Now, the flight was fairly routine until they reached the final leg of their trip, and then all of a sudden a warning light went off, indicating that there was a problem with the fuel pump in the left tank. But they weren't too concerned because there were three fuel tanks, and each one had two different sensors in them. One was bad. It wasn't any big deal. Just a little computer problem, maybe a little light or something that needed replacing. But within minutes, all six alarms went off, indicating that all three tanks were now out of fuel. And believe it or not, the plane really did run out of fuel at 41,000 feet, and they lost total power. It was quickly determined there was no way this airplane was going to make any airport. It had no fuel, and it was just basically falling out of the sky. Luckily, uh, First Officer Quintel remembered that he was younger that there was an Air Force base nearby, Gimli Air Force Base, hence the name Gimli Glider. It was located in Manitoba, but they quickly found out that the Air Force Base had been since abandoned. It was closed down. Now, it did have two 6,800-foot runways, but no one knew if they were even there anymore. They knew there was no control tower, and certainly there was no emergency equipment on the ground to deal with a plane of this size coming in with passengers and possibly starting a very, very large fire. Now, what would you do in this situation? You can either land at an Air Force Base that may or may not be there, or you can just die. Well, the option was very clear, and they decided to land at Gimli. So they dropped the landing gear down, but unfortunately the front nose gear would not lock in without any power. The plane was coming in very, very fast, so Captain Pearson decided to do a side slip. It turns out that he was a very experienced glider pilot, and he tried to do the same thing that you do with gliders with this giant Boeing 767. As they got close to the ground, they realized that this runway, in fact, was still in use. But it was not being used for airplanes. They were using it as a racetrack. 
they actually had a guardrail running right down the center of the runway because they were using it for drag races. And there were people down on the ground. Now, as this plane started coming in, people started to scramble, and they got off of the racetrack. And as the plane came in, the right wheels as they landed, the right rear wheels as they landed, actually popped. And now the engine was riding on the ground and producing a whole bunch of sparks as it scraped along. And then as the front gear came down, since it wasn't locked in, it just collapsed. And now the nose was moving along the ground. But believe it or not, they were able to stop the plane, uh, ripping down the guardrail and everything. And there were no major injuries. So what went wrong? Well, an investigation later determined that it had to do with the fuel computer. Before they ever even went on their journey, some of the indicators weren't working correctly. But since this was a brand new plane, they didn't have any parts on hand. So they decided to use the old standby method and actually calculate by hand how much fuel needed to be loaded onto the plane. And everything was fine until, of course, they got halfway and ran out of fuel. Well, it turns out that no one realized that this was the first plane that they owned that used the metric system. They did all their calculations using the old English system and, of course, only had half as much fuel as they needed to make their destination. So make sure you watch those units. Useless? Useful? Well, I'll leave that for you to decide. And now the answer to our question of the day, which had to do with the world of quantum physics. And that was that physicist Max Born won the Nobel Prize in 1954 for his pioneering work in quantum mechanics. And I asked you who he was the grandfather of. The choices were Elton John, Paul McCartney, Elvis Presley, Mick Jagger, Olivia Newton-John, and Keith Richards. And the answer is the Grease star, Olivia Newton-John. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's story on the miscalculations of the Gimli Glider. Just one little added fact is that they did repair the plane and they flew it out of there and put it back in service. If you'd like to read more true stories just like this, please be sure to get a copy of one of my books. Those are Einstein's Refrigerator and Other Stories from the Flip Side of History and Lindbergh's Artificial Heart, More Fascinating True Stories from Einstein's Refrigerator by me, Steve Silverman. Both books are available through your local bookseller, online retailers, and of course through libraries. If you'd like to contact me for any reason, simply drop me an email at useless at steve.silverman.name. That's useless at steve.silverman.name. Thanks again for listening.